welcome to Build, where once again we are live from London, here to chat about Series 2 of Flowers. Please give it up for Will Sharp, Daniel Rigby and Sophia DiMartino. <laughs> welcome to Build, how are you all doing today? Well, thank you. Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, really yeah, good. Great, thanks. <laughs> so before we get started, if anyone's got a question for the trio, then please send them to us on at Build Series LDN on Twitter or leave a comment on Facebook and we're going to ask as many as possible in the next 20 minutes. Should we have a chat about flowers? Yeah. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, Will, you don't only star in it, I'm going to put the spotlight on you straight away because you write the show as well, which means you're perfectly placed to give us a catch-up. Let's remind ourselves where we left off in Series 1. At the end of series one, uh, Morris and Deborah, who are the father and mother of the family, mm -hmm. uh, after a difficult uh, few weeks, have sort of arrived at a sort of complicated accommodation with the fact that Morris is suffering from a mental illness, namely depression. Mm -hmm. um, and Amy and Donald, Soph and Danny. Uh, <laughs> These two. <laughs> likewise, uh, Amy has been struck by lightning uh, and uh, Donald has carried her home from forest. Uh, and basically, we, we arrive at a sort of... At the end of series one, I think we arrive at a place of kind of uh, relief, mm -hmm. um, but with a sense that maybe, uh, you know, it's not as simple as just understanding... Uh, that there are problems because they're not necessarily going to go away. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a little look at a trailer in a second for Series 2, but there's a slight jump, isn't there, in time? Am I right? We jump forward a couple of years? Yeah, I'd say a couple, about a couple of years. About yeah. a couple of years. All right, let's have a little look at the trailer. <laughs> Such a bold way to start the day. I absolutely love that trailer. <laughs> so, Sophia, I'm going to come to you first because we saw you right at the start there. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with Amy now. So, yeah, a little bit of time has passed. Mm -hmm. um, she's survived being struck by lightning and having her heart broken. And she's kind of in a good place at the beginning of this series. Mm -hmm. She's got some friends. She's started this band called the Pink Cuttlefish Orchestra, <laughs> who are doing pretty well. <laughs> They've got a few gigs lined up. Um, <laughs> and she's in a happy relationship as well. She's in love. So she's, we see her in a pretty good place. At, at the beginning of the series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the start, she's doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> and Daniel, what about Donald? Because as um, Will said earlier, we had this really great moment when Amy was struck by lightning, where they almost, you know, he came to her rescue, he helped her, they seemed to bond, but are they, are they friends at the start of this? Are they getting on? Um, uh, well, no. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's tricky, that relationship. I think one of the things that's really nice about the scripts is that the, you can tell even though Donald is uh, horrible to Amy and about Amy, um, that he still really loves her. Um, mm. um, but I think w at the beginning of this series, Donald is very much still a virgin um, and he is furious about that <laughs> and has grown extraordinary hair on his he face and, yeah, <laughs> and a big mullet um, as well to appear more manly. And uh, he's start starting his own business, so he's trying to, you know, branch you, out and be more can responsible. Can you tell us a bit about the business? Because I've seen the episodes and I absolutely love it. It's not too spoilery. Can you tell us what he does? Um, yeah, he, he has become the great pipe man, um, <laughs> a plumber um, and superhero <laughs> of sorts. <laughs> uh, and he, yeah, he's, uh, he's you, all of his own inventions he's used as tools and... Mm. He, he's put that uh, inventiveness into a plumbing business. Well, I can't wait for everybody to see how that goes for him. Yeah. <laughs> and Will, finally then, obviously we've got Shun, uh, Morris and Deborah. What, fill us in on the rest of the family. Big um, job. <laughs> well, De Deborah, uh, who's played by Olivia Coleman, has written a book about Morris. He's played by Julian Barrett. Mm. Uh, and about living with his depression. Uh, and she's done that, I think, partly as a way of processing the events of the first series, uh, but also, you know, to try and reclaim a sense of independence that perhaps she might have felt like she lost over time. Morris is sort of quietly uncomfortable about the fact that his life is potentially going to be uh, published for public con consumption. Yeah. Um, and so that sort of creates new strains on their relationship. Uh, Shun, meanwhile, is kind of not really 
doing anything apart from seemingly just occasionally drinking quite a lot. I was gonna say, you say occasionally drinking quite a lot. It's kind of drinking a lot, a lot, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, he's like, so the, the, towards the end of the first series, um, uh, Grubs, which was the kind of uh, children's book series that Morris writes and Shun mm. was his illustrator, uh, that gets axed. Uh, and so now, basically, without that to do, Shun finds himself feeling, I think, uh, a little bit sort of without purpose. And so mm. he's sort of trying to work out um, what his new position is, I suppose, in the family. Mm. And you mentioned there, obviously, Julian Barrett. So you have one of the kings of comedy and then Olivia Colman, soon to be the actual queen in The Crown. You guys, what is it like having them as your on-screen parents? How is that? Pretty good. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> what are they like to work with? What's it like on set? Um, yeah, really nice. They're really lovely, easygoing, friendly. Funny. Slightly smelly people. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're lovely. And for series two as well, the cast expands a little bit. We saw it there and you mentioned Amy's new girlfriend, who is played by Harriet Walter, who is absolutely amazing. What was it like welcoming her into the fray? Because her character as well is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, she just fit right in straight away, didn't she? She's um, really funny and uh, she's a dame. <laughs> Which is just cool, isn't it? <laughs> she's a dame. So cool. <laughs> um, yeah, she it was like she's always been there in a way. <laughs> it, was, it was great. And can you talk a little bit about their relationship as well? Because Harriet, as we can see here, plays a priest. <laughs> mm. Yeah, uh, they meet. So Amy, I think, it was breaking into the church in the middle of the night to play the organ, and that's how they met. And uh, I think they're just kindred spirits. They get, you know, they understand each other, and they're in um, a really sweet relationship at the beginning of series two. It is really lovely, isn't it? I absolutely love it. And uh, we've had a question come in on Twitter. So Freya, who is watching online, wants to know where the idea of the new setting, the new series in the summer comes from and having all of the bright colours that are quite different from the first. Um, well, it was one of the first things I think that I knew about the second series was that I wanted it to be in a different season. Uh, mm -hmm. And I wanted it to feel, I, I wanted basically the first series to feel like a memory, uh, as it would to the characters. Okay. And I felt like changing the time of year would be one of the ways to do that. Uh, and the other thing to say is that the second series uh, explores in a little bit uh, more depth um, manic depression, or bipolar as it's known mm -hmm. now. And so I felt like a kind of warmer palette with really vivid, char uh, vivid <laughs> colours and characters mm -hmm. uh, would uh, <laughs> sort of suit that uh, kind of... Uh, like texturally would be suitable to the subject material. Mm -hmm. And do you feel as well that you could go a bit bigger with the second series? Because obviously with the first, you don't know how people are going to receive it. You're not sure what's going to, you know, what the critics are going to say. And the first came out and everybody absolutely loved it. Do you feel like you could sort of breathe a little sigh of relief going into the second? Or did it make the pressure worse? <laughs> a bit of both, I think. Like, um, I, just sort of, I don't know about you guys, but I sort of try not to think about it that too much. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, it is, you know, hugely motivating to know that there are people who, who watched it and apparently enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, and so <laughs> I suppose it, it does a bit of both. Like, it gives you confidence and it, it gives you uh, a sort of, uh, it motivates you to try and find new territory and to move the mm -hmm. series on and to kind of uh, continue, I suppose, like, the relationship between the show and its audience is like any relationship, basically, where I think it, re you know, relies on a kind of um, open discourse mm -hmm. and progress, basically. Uh, and so, yeah, it was both. It, it made it feel like it, there was a bit of pressure, but it was also quite motivating. Mm. And when did you guys all start working on the second series? Because I think the first, was it last April that we saw it? I think, it's probably a lie. I think it was when we saw it. When did you kind of get the go ahead to write them and when did you all regroup for filming? What was it? Was it two years, the gap? I or think so. It's, but it's like two years between series. Is it two years? Yeah. I think so. Roughly. I don't know. We it was summer time that we started filming. Yeah. Last or year. Uh, late August, September, October. Okay. No and no how long did you... you know, like, <laughs> get the diary out. <laughs> and how long did you go... How long do you spend on it filming? Um, I think it was six weeks. Six weeks? <laughs> yeah. I think... 
<laughs> Life changing <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and is it quite intense? Because the show is amazingly funny in the, the bleakest way. And as you say, the themes that you're dealing with this time around, we've got like <coughs> manic depression and bipolar. It's, it's quite intense in places, but it is really fun. What's the vibe like on set? How is, is it quite light still? How do you deal with it when you're filming the more serious scenes? Well, I mean, just the regards the vibes, um, it was <laughs> basically, I feel very lucky to have been in the, the show because the group of people that were assembled to do what was already a very special script, mm. the group of people were amazing. And um, so, so the atmosphere was, was brilliant and the chemistry between everyone, um, it felt like a very special job. Yeah, I, I, going back to what you were asking about Julian and Olivia as well, I think I also feel very lucky. And <laughs> it, it, it really felt like this was a sort of, to me anyway, it felt like this is a rare chemistry. Uh, everyone mm. seemed to, to get each other immediately. And especially having done the first series uh, together, it felt like there was an immediate kind of trust. Uh, and that helped us to kind of uh, go with each other to funny places, difficult places. Mm. Well, it's like we were talking about earlier, the uh, dynamic between the siblings. I think the relationships that you portray on the screen, it's this very dysfunctional family. We have your character, Shun, who is very much part of the family, but you know, not biologically. I think to build that kind of chemistry on scene, you must, you need to have that click behind the scenes. Yeah, we were always clicking. And between the filming, did you all stay in contact? Do you have a flowers WhatsApp? N no. 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 <laughs> Everybody hates each other. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my no, god. No, no, we do. No, we we do stay in touch, but not on WhatsApp. <laughs> no, I don't know why. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> Pushing a real anti-WhatsApp agenda. What's fine? What's that fine? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're going to say something. You're going to dish the dirt. WhatsApp is. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do meet up from time yeah. to time, don't we? And yeah, yes. that was all I was going to say. Like, <laughs> you haven't been invited to any of them. You're just like, do you meet up? <laughs> well, me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> And with the, one of my favorite things about the first series, the last couple of episodes, there were like some really big emotional sucker punches, like out of, not out of nowhere, but there were certain bits that just really hit you and you're like, oh my God, this is incredibly emotional. Are we going to have more of those in series two? How does that filter through? Um, yeah, uh, I think so. I mean, it, the, it's, I think of the two series as kind of two halves of a uh, kind of big story and each, the same way that each episode has a kind of mini story within it, each series has a story and it's kind of like a new chapter. And I do think that the two series speak to each other. So mm -hmm. the story in the second series uh, kind of uh, relies on the first series having happened, uh, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so it, we do go to some challenging territory. And you know, one thing to say is that you know, this is a, these are comedy characters who live in mm -hmm. a comedy world. And how it felt to write it was that uh, basically these characters have their own agency and we're just following them to where they're trying to take us, basically. Mm -hmm. And so if they're feeling a certain way, then that's where we end up, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, it does. And obviously they're comedy characters, but you have this, you know, mental health is obviously like the, what the main theme within kind of the show, mental health and family. How do you find that balance when you're writing it and both what will come to you guys when you're acting it? Because obviously it's, it is a comedy and it's funny, but you've got these very serious themes. Well, one of the things that we were really kind of uh, militant about was never laughing at anyone, mm -hmm. any of the characters, never laughing at their state of mind and instead trying to challenge myself, I suppose, to engineer complicated situations that have kind of unfortunately challenging sort of uh, results for the characters to deal with. Um, and so I think there's always a balance to strike. Uh, I find uh, characters funnier if I sort of believe them as a, as a human being with feelings. Uh, and equally, I think uh, I find things personally more moving uh, mm. if they have a sense of humor, uh, because I suppose that's how I see the world, is that funny things happen, and also sad and difficult things happen as well. Mm. And what is it like for you guys playing that balance between the kind of light and dark? 
Uh, yeah, I, th I think... Um, I'm, I'm not sure there's really a difference in uh, how you'd approach uh, a script or a, or a character according to tone. Mm -hmm. I think just try and come at things uh, as honestly as possible. And if you need to pull a funny face, pull a funny face. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good advice, just generally. Yeah. <laughs> and Sophia, how about it's you? It's going to be a gif. <laughs> <laughs> it's got gif written all over it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that just to be as honest as possible with the way you're portraying anything. And uh, I think uh, for me, it's important to remember that, you know, uh, there are a lot of people with mental health problems and uh, most of them still have a sense of humour. <laughs> like you can have yeah. mental health problems and have a sense of humour. And um, yeah, that's something that I uh, tried to remember when I was playing Amy. Mm -hmm. I think as well, like... Uh, the, sh the show is about family and the idea of home and, as you say, mental illness. But I think one of the things that we were keen to sort of express was that mental illness doesn't uh, preclude you from a joyful and fulfilling life and it doesn't mm -hmm. rule out laughter, you know. Like, And I think, again, the sort of trust that we had with each other meant that we could balance, hopefully, those two things. And also, when when we were casting, like everyone in this cast is there because because they are funny and mm -hmm. also have depth. Like so, the sort of the balance is partly inherent in in these guys, and also in the script. Before we even turned up, <laughs> 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 you're nodding like yeah, <laughs> it's a great script. Sorry, I was just nodding. I was just nervous. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> Well, sadly, we are running out of time, so this is probably going to make you more nervous. I saw a video where you and Julian Barrett attempted to do this online, so and you didn't do a very good job, but I'm going to make you do it again, and hopefully you will. <laughs> it's not that bad, it's not that bad. Uh, finally, before we go, can you sum up the new series of Flowers in three words? Oh, see. Yeah, I remember, I remember that now. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else go first. Okay. Go on, go, go on Daniel, you've got this. Uh, colourful, funny... And uh, heart wrenching. Oh, he's stolen a lot of good words. Say it again. <laughs> vivid. <laughs> yes. Good, nice. Thesaurus. Yes. Uh, vivid. Vivid. And, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> vivid. Funny. And hopeful. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> Ham. <laughs> Desk. <laughs> um, uh, uh, wild, wild, Hi. warm. You said warm. No, you said hopeful. That's yeah. different. Wild, warm. Uh, um, I can't say desk. But <laughs> 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 um, he said funny though, right? Said funny yeah. too. Oh. Well, Why don't you uh, just do humorous? Any more <laughs> suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> wild, uh, wild. Oh, sorry, this takes so long. It's okay. It's <laughs> like, we're always really bad at this. Uh, These chairs are really comfy. We can wild, just tell. Uh, warm and. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Someone said weird. Uh, Interesting. Um, <laughs> complex. <laughs> complex. Oh, yeah. That's good because they were complex answers. Okay. <laughs> and well, ham. And ham. And yeah. desk. But sadly, that is all we have got time for. So we're going to have to end it on that note. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> sorry it about was that. a great note to end on. It was sorry great. About that. So, oh, series one of Flowers is on all four, and you can watch it again or catch up now. And then Flowers is going to be back on Channel Four on Monday, the 11th of June, at 10 p.m. Please give it up one more time for the cast of Flowers. Woo!